Paul Jackson Jr. in three words. A triple threat. The best one. He the man. <laughs> he the man. Ah, the big day, showing up to the gig. Rhythm guitarist apply here. Ah, they have guitar soloist apply too. Ah, it's great. Man. Gee, what was wrong with that guy? Oh well. It's my big chance. Rhythm guitarist. Ah, must be some problem. Uh, nobody wants to uh, play rhythm. Everybody's in line to be the soloist. That's kind of strange. Uh, maybe he just doesn't understand. Oh well. Can't get no love. Oh well. Hi, I'm Paul Jackson Jr. And welcome to the science of rhythm guitar. You know, rhythm is so important for today's guitarist. Especially when you consider the fact that for every solo taken, there are at least ten rhythm parts that need to be played. So it is of paramount importance that you become not only a great soloist, but a great rhythm player as well. And in today's curriculum for guitar players, rhythm unfortunately is overlooked too much of the time. But I'm here to fill that void. So get up, pick up your guitar and your manuscript paper, your tuner and your guitar picks, and come with me as we enter the laboratory to study the science of rhythm guitar. <laughs> Technique. Now let's talk about technique for a minute. Technique is equally as important with rhythm playing as it is with every other type of guitar playing, be it single string soloing or you know any type of melodic playing or classical music. So we need to build our technique for good solid rhythm playing as well as for all other types of guitar playing. First thing we should do though is tune up, okay? I'm going to give you my A and you tune your guitar accordingly and we can all be in sync here, okay? I'll give it to you one more time, just for uh, you slow folks. No, one more time. One of the things that I recommend for building good technique is not using strings that are too light. For certain playing situations, you, you need to use nines or even eights. Um, but for building really solid technique, I recommend using at least a 10 or 11, uh, being like a 10 through 46 set or 11 through like 49 or 52, which is what I'm using on this guitar today, um, just for this, the standpoint of building good hand strength. Also, from the standpoint of picks, I don't recommend using a pick that's too light. If you use a pick that's too light, you can never get the timing really correct uh, between your left hand and your right hand for good rhythm playing. So I always use at least a heavy pick and I like the the triangular shaped ones. You notice this one has my name on it. <laughs> uh, I use the triangular shaped ones but the teardrop ones are fine as well. Whatever suits your your hand size and and your playing style is fine. Okay, so let's talk about actually playing. Um, one of the things I use for timing between the left hand and the right hand is just playing simple one octave scales. It's a method that I learned in school called the three on a string method. And what it is is playing one octave major scales within a six fret range. And I'll play a little of it slowly for you so you can, so you can get uh, a feed on actually what it looks like. recommend always, always, always practicing with a metronome. A metronome does several things for you. Uh, one of the things that it does, it forces you 
to play in time. If you're playing along with your metronome at any tempo and you realize that you're not with it, that means that you're either rushing or you're lagging behind. Another thing that a metronome does is it forces you to not stop. Because a lot of times we'll like get stuck on a phrase or get stuck in the middle of something or something doesn't sound very good and we'll want to stop. And a metronome kind of pushes you along into continuing. Third thing a metronome does is it helps or it assists in the timing between your left hand and your right hand. So it's always a good idea to practice with a metronome and always practice in tune. So we're going to play a little of the three on a string method uh, in time at a tempo of about 108 and I'll show you what it looks like and, and you get an idea. Another thing that's very good to uh, practice is uh, what I call the, the first fret uh, hand buster. And it's a very simple exercise that's very good for building left hand strength or if you're left handed, right hand strength. You uh, alternate between your first and fourth, first and third, and first and second fingers. You go down the, down the strings, uh, go up one fret, go up the strings, go up one fret and go down again. The exercise goes something like this. Once again, I recommend always using a metronome. We're going to take it a little bit slower because speed is not what's most important here. It's accuracy, okay? So it looks a little something like this. technique that's very, very important in good solid rhythm playing is muting. Uh, muting is something that we kind of take for granted, but it's something that should be practiced as part of your technique practice. Let's just take a simple C scale. And we're going to play it in eighth notes. But we're going to practice the muting technique. Now, muting will vary uh, from the type of guitar you're playing, from the fact if you have a tremolo or if you don't have a tremolo, the scale of your neck and also the size of your hands. What you want to do is place the outside of your palm right in front of your bridge, being careful not to push the guitar out of tune, especially if you have a tremolo, and not to choke the sound too much. What you want to practice or listen for is the right tone. The first thing we're going to practice is up and down strokes. So I'm going to take the outside of my palm, put it right in front of the bridge, and go up and down, and we're going to play that C scale. Once again, a little bit slower. Okay, now we're going to try that same C scale with only down strokes. You'll notice a subtle difference between the up and down strokes versus just the down strokes. And it's these subtleties that will personalize your own rhythm playing. And you should not only practice just single strings or just single notes by themselves, practice a few intervals. Practice, you know, like fifths, for instance, like uh, the old rock and roll kind of thing.
practice arpeggios, muting arpeggios. Okay, you can practice intervals like thirds. Thirds are very good to practice muted. And just, you know, make up exercises for yourself to personalize the muting technique. But it's something that should be practiced. And once again, you want to concentrate on the end result, which is a good, solid, muted tone. Not too choked off, not too open, but just right.